What's all the drama around the cause of flaky automated tests? Have you seen the latest free DevOps bootcamp course? And what webinars should you attend to learn more about the future of functional testing with AI? Find out in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of May 12th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Before we get into it, if you could do me a quick favor and answer a small survey to find out what guild goodies you want and find value from, it really will help me know what free stuff really will give you value. And all you need to do is go to testguild.me forward slash free stuff. Speaking of free stuff, I have a free webinar coming your way next week that I think you definitely should check out if you want to discover the future of functional testing with AI. So this is our Test Guild webinar of the week spotlight. Register now to join automation expert and practitioner Chris Tripper and OpenText chief technologist Don Jackson as they dive into UFT's automation tooling from the perspective of various personas and organizations requiring functional test automation, showing what shift everywhere means. And they're also going to touch upon the different areas and capabilities of the tooling and we're also going to dive into some of the most recent advances or advantages of AI computer vision, which makes for more straightforward and lower maintenance scripting. Even if you don't use UFT, this webinar will showcase real-world applications of AI and testing, and these insights could be directly applied to your own testing efforts, making it a valuable opportunity for you. So register now in the link down below and hope to see you there. So what's the drama all around flaky tests? Well, let's find out. So in this recent blog post by David Burns, he challenges the assertion that test framework choice, such as Cypress or Selenium, is the primary cause of flaky tests. This post highlights a common misconception about the source of flakiness in automated testing and provides insights into the true factors contributing to this issue. So what's the drama all about? Well, this post is actually a response to another post by Gleb. And in Gleb's post, he claims that Cypress architecture choices, which avoid certain transport layers, make it less prone to flakiness than other frameworks like Selenium or Playwright. And the post by Gleb was actually posted by Philip recently, but the post itself is a little bit older. But regardless of when it was posted, David responded to it recently, and he argues that flakiness is less about the choice of a framework and more about the asynchronous nature of web applications and how tests interact with them. He points out the root cause of flakiness lies in how tests intercept UI and browser code execution, emphasizing the mismatch between synchronous test steps and asynchronous browser operations. And with all the different browser interpretations, it makes it further hard and exacerbates flakiness with frameworks struggling to support multiple browsers. So which view is right? I recommend reading both posts and you decide. So which view is right? I recommend reading both posts and you decide. And then let me know your thoughts now in the comments down below. So if you're into Playwright and dashboards, this next resource is for you. And this is by Playwright Ambassador Butch who recently compiled a really thoughtful review of the current Playwright dashboarding, offering insights on historical test automation run data and identifying flaky tests. Let's check it out. So this review by Butch highlights the dashboard's user-friendly interface and the wealth of data it provides to testers. The current Playwright dashboard allows testers to access historical test automation test runs, enabling them to track the progress of the test over time. And this feature is really valuable for identifying trends and patterns and test results, helping testers make informed decisions about their testing strategy. And speaking all about flaky tests, this dashboard helps testers identify flaky tests, which are tests that produce inconsistent results. So flaky tests can be a major headache for testers as they can lead to false positives or negatives in test results. But by using the dashboard's built-in tools for analyzing test data, testers can quickly pinpoint flaky tests and take corrective actions to improve the reliability of their test suite. So this next article was recommended to me by Jason Arbin, and it's all about OS World introduces benchmarking for multimodal agents in real computer environments. What does that all mean? Let's find out. In this research from the University of Hong Kong in collaboration with other institutes have developed OS World, a groundbreaking real computer environment for multimodal agents. And this environment supports task execution, execution-based evaluation, and interactive learning across various operating systems like Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. OS World aims to provide a unified platform for evaluating open-end computer tasks involving arbitrary applications with a benchmark for reliable evaluation. So what does this have to do with testing? Well, I think testers can benefit from this because it can help you create a comprehensive environment 
to evaluate agents across different operating systems, enhancing their testing capabilities and insights. And the OS World Benchmark offers testers a standardized platform to assess agents' performance on real computer tasks, providing valuable insights for developing more effective multimodal agents. And testers also can actually leverage this environment to enhance their testing methodologies and strategies to help improve the quality and efficiencies of the testing processes. And once again, Jason pointed out, so if Jason points something out, to me, it means it's probably important to know and you can find more about it as well. Let me know your thoughts. So I often get asked, how can we learn more about DevOps as it applies to continuous testing and automation? Well, I created an awesome resource just for that. So I'm now offering a free DevOps continuous test automation bootcamp aiming to enhance testing capabilities for rapid software delivery and helping you to optimize your DevOps practices. This course in conjunction from awesome folks at Keysights covers a range of topics, including the role of test automation and accelerating release cycles, implementing test automation and CICD pipelines and concepts of continuous testing in DevOps. And we have an awesome lineup of instructors that walk you step-by-step -step of what you need to know to be successful with DevOps with continuous test automation. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend you register now to learn more about continuous test automation and why it's crucial for supporting agile development, CICD practices, and DevOps. And you can find a link for it down below. Also, did you know Playwright just released a new version? I didn't until I saw this latest article by Michael posting to it, which is all about Playwright 1.44. So in this latest update to Playwright, users can expect a range of new features and improvements aimed to enhancing your testing experience. The update includes an introduction of new APIs, improving its locator handler and enhancements to miscellaneous options. One improvement I really dig is its new API that allows for improved accessibility testing. Testers can now utilize APIs such as exact locator to have accessibility name to show that their web applications are accessible to all users. And this new functionality will significantly benefit testers looking to enhance the accessibility of their products. Additionally, the locator handle on Playwright has received upgrades in version 1.4 as well. One notable improvement is that Playwright now waits until the overlay triggered by the handler is no longer visible, providing a more seamless testing experience. And it also has improvements to the reporter API. And also in terms of command line updates, the update introduces the last failed CLI option. And this new option enables users to run only failed tests from the previous run, saving time and resources while improving their testing workflow. Definitely something that you should check out if you're using Playwright and download it and let me know your thoughts. So a few days ago, there was a big announcement by Datadog and it is that they just announced its launch of IT event management to enhance its AI ops capabilities. And this new feature intelligently consolidates, correlates and enriches all alert events and signals from Datadog and third party observability tools into a single view reducing alert fatigue for teams. And by streamlining incident management, teams can now focus on issue resolutions more effectively. So it's definitely a good read if you wanna know how you could benefit from improved incident management processes that can lead to quicker issue resolutions and reduce alert fatigue. And in my experience, having the enhanced ability to triage quickly using intelligent correlation of events and have a complete picture of the underlying issue can really empower you to respond and remediate issues quickly and effectively. And you can find out more about it in the link down below. And in other AI development news, Oracle has made an update that incorporates AI as well. And this is how Oracle has unveiled Oracle Code Assistant, which is an AI powered tool designed to help developers and testers increase their speed and ensure code consistency. And this innovative solution optimized for Java, SQL, and Oracle Cloud infrastructure-based applications offers context-specific suggestions tailored to an organization's coding practices and standards. And this tool is deployable as a plugin for JetBrains, IntelliJ, IDE, or Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And in security news, I just found out that GuardSpace has enhanced its free mobile app security testing product with an enterprise ready version. I bring this up because I didn't even know there was a free version. So I like sharing new tools with you and hopefully you'll check it out. But this upgrade allows organizations to benefit from developer tester friendly mobile specific security testing that can scale effectively. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end to end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.